Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a standard plunge base router and turn it into the best router lift I bet you've ever seen, all without breaking the bank. I'm Gavin. This is 42 Pursuit. I think we can all agree that router lifts are typically pretty stinking expensive. You have to buy the mechanism itself, which is a couple hundred dollars, and then you have to also supply the router. However, I've noticed you can often pick up a used but still super solid plunge base router off of a site like Craigslist or Marketplace for less than a hundred bucks. Then there's a product called the Router Razor, not sponsored, and it turns a plunge base router into a router lift that's accessible from the top of the table or the bottom of the table. As always, I'll have links to everything in this video in the description below. I've already added the Router Razor hardware to this router and made a video detailing that simple process. I'll have a link for that here and in the description below. Now you can obviously stop right there and you've got a super solid router lift and router for under about $200. But we're gonna wire up some electronics and make this height adjustable with just the push of a button and fine tunable with just the turn of a dial. Now don't go just yet. I know that the mention of electronics sends many woodworkers running away screaming in fear and confusion. Because you're here watching this video, and if you have a little bit of a can-do attitude, I'm confident that you'll be able to replicate the circuit that we're going to be designing in this video with no prior experience necessary. Let's get started. These are the major components that we'll be using on this design. Let's quick walk through each one and their purpose. This is the brains of the operation. It is an Arduino Nano microcontroller. Now, if that sounds like Greek to you, just think of it as the brain of something like a microwave. It can't check your email, but it can do one thing and do it really well. This is the inspiration for this project. This is a rotary encoder. It is a spinning dial that doesn't have an end stop and reports back to the microcontroller exactly what position it's at. So we'll be able to use this to move the stepper motor back and forth, which brings us to the stepper motor. This is a NEMA 23 1.26 Newton meter stepper motor. This is a strong motor that can rotate its shaft to a specific angle down to 1.8 degrees of precision paired with this stepper motor driver, which takes high voltage in and drives the stepper through data lines, telling it how many steps to go in either direction. We've got the power input for the whole system. This will be a 12 volt supply. This will drive 12 volt supply to this, and then through our voltage converter, this little guy, it'll take 12 volts in and step it down to five volts out that will feed into the power of the microcontroller because it runs at a lower voltage. These are known as limit switches. They have a lever that acts like a switch when pressed, and it either opens the circuit between two pins or closes the circuit between two pins, depending on your application. These three buttons are exactly what you expect. They're momentary, so that when you push on them, they make momentary short between the two contacts on the bottom. And last but not least, this is what I like to call a missile switch. It's actually just a regular two position switch with a cover, but we will be using that for the power into our system. Oh, wait, actually, I forgot one. This is actually the last part. It is a momentary rocker switch with two positions that centers on zero. So when it pushes down, it makes connection between these two pins. When it presses up, it makes connection between these two pins. Now, because I know that the only thing more boring than watching someone wire up a prototype circuit is watching someone write code, I've taken the liberty of doing both off camera. And now through the use of a little movie magic, let me show you what we've got. Starting with the rotary encoder, this has a direct relation to the position of the stepper motor. As it turns, the stepper motor turns, and this has a built-in detent for a button press. If you press it in, now it's a super fine-tuned adjustment of the rotation position of the stepper motor. Next, we've got the rocker switch. This will be for rapid movements. Next, we've got these three buttons. I'm calling the red one the safety switch, and then we have the go to top and go to bottom button. So when you press the safety switch and the go to top button, that starts spinning and won't stop until the limit switch is pressed. And then same for the opposite, going down. And that won't stop until the bottom limit switch is pressed. One last feature that I added was an LED. Now we have two pins here that we'll use for height adjustment, basically a touch probe. When these two are touching, the LED turns on. That'll make a little more sense once we have the system assembled. Now that this prototype circuit is working, let's take this whole thing over to the router table, temporarily connect this to the router lift and make sure that the mechanism works as expected. Now this lift on the top and bottom takes a 3 16 Allen key. So I took one of my extras, hacked it off and put it in the end of a flex coupling that then fits on the shaft of a stepper motor. Let's tighten that down. Now I should be able to just hold that up there and with the rotary encoder. Okay, so down, down's fine. Up, hmm, up it struggles a bit. If 
I raise it up. Man, that's a lot of pressure. Hmm. So it's looking like the stepper motor doesn't quite have the torque needed to raise this router lift. I think there's a couple things that we can do when installing the router raiser kit. It says to leave the springs in the plunge base router. And that is only exacerbating the problem because it's adding force down, which then makes it harder to press up. So let's pull this out, troubleshoot that, maybe pull the springs out and maybe figure out something to reduce the rotational friction of this guy. Now looking at it, because this threaded mechanism isn't clamped on to the rod here, there's nothing pushing it down. So you kind of would have to trust gravity. I think we might need to throw one of the springs back in. Let's just try that and see if that works. Okay, let's try that again. One spring is removed. Okay. Oh. Okay, down, up, let's see, woo, okay, <laughs> there we go. Your mileage may vary depending on what router you use, but it seems to be working pulling one of the springs out, which doesn't have so much downward force. It still stays in position where it needs to be, but there isn't so much force resisting this screw turning, which resists stepper motor. You could also opt to get a bigger stepper motor. I think they have about three Newton meter ones. And now that we've had a successful functional test, the next step is to take all of the electrical components, bring them inside to the soldering station, remove them from the temporary breadboard and solder everything together so that we have strong electrical connections for long-term use. And you know what that means? Montage time. All right, everything's attached, wires are connected. All that's left now is to plug in the power, turn it on, and moment of truth. Up, down, rough up, and rough adjust down. Go to top. Yes, and go to bottom. Yes. But wait, there's more. Remember these two wires that when they touch, the LED turns on? I've attached magnets to the end. LED still works, but what are these for? Allow me to introduce my friend, the digital height gauge. Now with this nifty little gadget, we're gonna unlock the full potential of this rattle lift table. Say you wanna cut a groove that's a specific height, all you have to do is lower this down and zero it on the table. Then raise it up to the height that you want. Just say that's where we want it. Put it over your bit. Grab your two magnetic leads 
and stick one to the bit, like that, and one to the caliper. Now, using your fine-tuned control, we're already pretty close, so I'm gonna use the rough adjustment to get it closer, and then the fine adjustment to dial it in until the light turns on. And now we know that the router bit is exactly the height that we want. Or for another example, if you wanna set up the bits for cutting door rails and styles quickly and repeatably. We're gonna start with a stub tenon cutter and set that to a height that's appropriate for the project. Take the measurement off the top of the carbide and make note of that for future reference. Cut the pieces you need, measure the tongue height of one of these pieces and make note of that measurement as well. Now use that measurement for setting the height of the groove cutter. And with your recorded measurements, you can set up the precise height of both bits whenever you want and can make perfectly matching rails and styles, even if you have to change out the router bit in between for different operations. Super handy if you find that you're one piece short or made a mistake and have to remake a piece. Another thing I found quite handy is for cutting slots in a piece of wood. The wood can first be positioned on the router table and then the router bit can be raised up into it. This method feels a bit more precise and safer than lowering a piece down on the spinning router bit. I so far have only added the electronic lift components to my one plunge base router in my router table, but I'm sure with a little bit of ingenuity, you could add this to other styles of router lifts as well. You'll just have to figure out exactly how to attach the stepper motor to the lift mechanism and find appropriate spots for the top and bottom limit switches. I think there's lots of potential for other uses outside of just router lifts. Imagine this mechanism other places. Add a long lead screw to the stepper motor that moves a block and voila, you've got a stop block set up for a miter saw. Or there's a bunch of options on a table saw, such as moving the fence or adjusting the height or tilt of the blade. There's so many possibilities and I plan on exploring more of them. Now I've got a feeling that there's a few of you curious about the precision of the rough and fine adjustment using the rotary encoder. Now, first of all, I've got the stepper driver set on these switches on the end to full step mode. That paired with how the code is written, the course adjustment changes the height of the router three thousandths every detent and the fine adjustment moves it 0.67 thousandths every detent. One quick side note, the beauty of this encoder is the little circuit board it's soldered to. It has a small pre-programmed microcontroller that when asked by the Arduino, responds with its current position. This greatly simplifies the code and helps keep the rotary encoder and the stepper motor synced together. Speaking of the Arduino, if programming one sounds like a daunting task, it's not. All you've gotta do is install the Arduino software on your computer, this is called an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Copy the code I've got linked below into a new project, plug in the Arduino via USB to your computer, and make sure the IDE is pointing to the right USB device and the right kind of microcontroller is selected in the menus. Add the Adafruit Seesaw library, and lastly, just click on the upload button, give it a second, and boom, just like that, you've programmed a microcontroller. I recognize it can be daunting to get started on an electronics project like this. So my goal is to make it all as easy and straightforward as possible to duplicate this design. I've got an overview of the build up on my website, including links to all the parts used, a wiring diagram, the microcontroller code, and the 3D models of the 3D parts that I printed. But those don't have to be printed. You can make those out of wood or other materials that you have on hand. I've also made a few tweaks from the initial prototype that will make assembly easier. The main one of interest is this breakout board for the Arduino. It has screw terminals and that will help reduce the amount of soldering needed by quite a bit. It's also got press fit sockets, so it's easy to remove the Arduino for reprogramming if you wanna customize the code or change the components used. For example, instead of having an LED indicator for the touch probe, you could remove that and instead rewrite the code so that it disables the upward movement of the stepper motor when the two magnets touch of the touch probe. I personally like having the visual feedback of an LED turning on, but maybe that's just me. You are welcome to modify the code to your heart's content. Now, if you're looking a bit more for an in-depth guide, I've also created super detailed step-by-step -step PDF plans. And yep, you guessed it, there's a link to those plans in the description below. As an additional offering, I'm also putting together a kit of all of the electronics components, including the wires needed for this project. And the kit will include the plans as well. The kit should cost about the same price as if you were to source all of the electronic components individually, but all the parts will come in one box. And as an added bonus, you'll be helping support this channel. As always, please throw your comments, questions, and feedback below, as I'd love to hear your thoughts about this project. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay curious and take care.